jurisdictions that are importing renewable energy want to know, in fact, that it's certified as renewable. So there's a system that has evolved to issue renewable energy certificates. We're going to talk to Tom Lindbergh, who's the managing director at ECHOES in, Nor in Norway, about the European system and, and how it works and what it means for the direction in which renewable energy is going in the EU. So welcome to the interview, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you well, for having me. Start, can we start with a, a brief overview of what renewable energy certificates are, please? I can do that. Um, in Europe, these certificates are called guarantees of origin. And they're meant to do exactly that, to document the origin, the, the way and location where energy or power is created. Um, taking a few steps back, it actually has a 20 year history in Europe. And it, it's important to understand where it actually is coming from. Everybody believes that it's, you know, it's, it's a new uh, instrument created to, to move climate change or to change people's energy behavior, but it was actually driven from consumer protection policy originally in, in Europe where, where, where the, the notion is quite strong that consumers are obliged to know how their products are produced. And so it, it's all about creating information to consumers and allowing consumers a sensible, educated choice. Uh, and they've never had that before, but in a liberated market, it's not only about choosing a supplier, but it's actually the allowing consumers to choose how um, uh, power is is, uh, is produced. Now, a certificate is one megawatt hour, um, and that's standardized across um, across kind of this, these markets. What the EU decided to do was to allow uh, both the issuing and the purchasing of these certificates across the EU or also a few other related markets. So creating a large energy market where consumers somewhere in that market could buy and document uh, an energy purchase somewhere else. Now, so it, it, it's a lot about consumer rights, but the energy side of the EU saw early that this could also be used to drive um, kind of a movement uh, toward uh, well, send signals to producers to, to purchase more or, or produce more of what the consumers wanted. Right, and so you've got what uh, I understand are called go markets, uh, the guarantee of origin markets. How, how do you trade these certificates? Could you explain that please? Well, they're traded in a number of ways. There are brokers, there are a few exchanges, but most of it is traded or sold to, to clients uh, over the counter or, or kind of directly. So it, there isn't kind of a one holistic place where you would go, uh, numerous channels. Um, but it also means that one certificate can trade, uh, can be traded a number of times, but the end consumer being a household organization or company is the sole or is, is the last owner and it will be used and reported as such for that only uniquely um, done once. Um, so I, well, there's a lot of interest for in, in, in Canada, we see a lot of what we call corporate power purchase agreements where like a bank will say, I want, uh, I'm the bank, I want to be 100% renewable energy. So I'm going to purchase wind and solar. And I get these energy certificates to prove that I am in fact, to my shareholders and, and to my stakeholders that I am uh, that we are 100% renewable energy. That's where we get our electricity from. Is that the, the idea here? It is exact, it's exactly that what it is. But you do not necessarily have to do this through a power purchase agreement, but it could also purchase this from a supplier you know, with a green power deal, but you can also purchase these certificates separately from your power purchase. Uh, so there are actually three distinct ways of doing it, separately through your supplier or directly with a kind of park, solar park you know, developer or owner. Gotcha. Uh, now, my understanding, Tom, is that the trading of, well, there used to be a surplus of renewable energy in Europe, but the go market trading now indicates that that's coming more into balance and that the demand for renewable energy is expanding significantly over the last year or two. Have I got that correct? 
that that is correct um the the demand in europe has been almost linear i mean it's so it, it's i mean it's been very robust almost no negative effect through a pandemic year so it's very robust so there is a household market there is a kind of smb organizational market but i mean most of this demand the robust demand is driven by a very strong corporate movement uh, toward access to renewables. Now, it, what, what is important is that it doesn't mean that there is less renewables being put online, but the mechanism of the market has been such that more you know, every year, a number of countries have kind of joined this, this joint market. So you've had chunks of renewables being added on the supply side, that's more or less over. So you're now going to have a much more consistent trajectory on the supply side that is expected to be somewhat flatter and lower than the demand side. So what it does mean is that with higher demand versus supply, we might see a little different price development that we've had in the future. So does this mean, Tom, that if uh, as the demand, uh, the price changes in the market for these uh, uh, renewable energy certificates, that sends the price signal, signal to energy developers and, you know, to build another solar uh, farm or put in another wind farm? Is that how that works? That is the intention. Of course, these are fairly indirect signals, but, but in Europe, which has been um, very used to having either subsidies or support schemes, which have been fairly generous. Most of most countries have taken, you know, different. Uh, uh, they've decided differently moving forward. So you see less and less of these generous, you know, um, so support schemes uh, in the in the years to come. What we see now is kind of the, the voluntary schemes, the guarantees of origin possibly over time replacing part of these kind of investment flows. And so I think a lot of developers will depend more and more on the voluntary choice of, of documenting and purchasing with guarantees of origin. Now, final question, Tom, um, how much more room is there for the corporate market to expand? Are we, are, is there still uh, a fair amount of uh, opportunity there? Uh, for uh, corporations to uh, to buy renewable energy certificates, or is this a, a fairly well developed market by now? To be honest, there's there is a lot of room, uh, so the supply is going to continue to, to develop. Um, at the moment, there are some policy issues in certain countries that that disallow the issuing of certain uh, technologies and certain. Um, uh, power plants. So there's there's definitely room to grow. We still do think that kind of the movement on the corporate side, uh, driven by a lot of kind of stakeholder interest, reporting requirements, is going to outpace the supply. So, but it will grow. Only about 50% of the renewable production is at the moment certified and issued. Um, I noticed that you, in your press release, you talked about an 8% growth in the market from 2019 to 2020. Is that the kind of growth we can look forward to in the 2020s? Uh, I expect it's going to continue exactly the same trajectory, to be honest. If you look, if you go back to eight, nine, 10 years, we're looking at a kind of year over year, 15% increase. So, yes. Tom, thank you very much for these insights. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you.